Welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you a drawing that I had uh, created and it's subsequent watercolour. Now I've actually never done this in terms of combining two art mediums. The first one is generally just drawing using fine liners and it's something that I generally always look at doing in the summer months and painting in the winter months. My watercolour is primarily landscapes and in terms of my drawing, I'm definitely heavily influenced by uh, another uh, YouTuber. He is um, of the name of Peter Draws. I've always been into drawing. The method in which he goes by really, I think, is a really powerful way of drawing in terms of its mindfulness. Now, the idea around just putting pen to paper and just, just, just drawing, uh, not having to worry about anything in your mind where is it going to go you can just put your pen down draw curves lines shadows shades hatching oh, a range of different things you can employ and it's just fun to just to see where it ends up in this instance i wanted to experiment with something again how i mentioned at the beginning something with my watercolor so generally with my drawings, uh, there's a little bit more detail than what you would normally see here. Uh, but I purposefully left quite a lot of space to employ my watercolour. In no way do I consider myself an artist. Now, I'm a primary school teacher by trade. And art is something I just love to do in my own time. Again, just that relaxa relaxation side of things. Uh, it's just great for the mind, the creativity. And just looking back on a, on a finished product, I think it's just so valuable. I am not what you would call technically competent in the areas of drawing and painting. Though they are areas that I am striving to get better at. Now, do I consider myself an artist? Nowhere near a professional sense. Now, a lot of the drawing that I take, it's definitely all this drawing in particular, that's rough. Them, nearly every single one of them is an abstract image. Um, I find it very, very tricky to draw life. Uh, I think my watercolours of landscape scenery is something that is developing and getting a little bit better. But I find drawing life, actually, to backtrack on that a little bit, drawing birds is something that I think probably comes close to uh, representing something lifelike. The reason I'm probably talking about this now is that when I finished uh, watercolouring this image, it came, I suppose it's, uh, it's very cartoony, that's not something that I normally do. Um, I'm still not really sure how I feel about it, and you know, it's just something that uh, I suppose I'll keep working on as I uncover uh, my technique and how I do things. I've uh, just returned from the beach, a little bit of a family holiday, and I've been wanting to do something as a bit of inspiration. The children have loved to go down and, and hunt for crabs. And so this is something that I think uh, kind of resonates with that a little bit. Um, it's amazing the different types and varieties of crabs we have where I live, uh, ranging in different pincers, uh, shapes and sizes and colours. Uh, the colouring of some of the crabs is just amazing. Beginning uh, before I started painting in this image. Uh, I did quite a lot of uh, experimentation uh, around colour and I think we did briefly see uh, a piece of that at, at the start and I settled with, so as you can see, yellows and reds. Precisely my watercolour set is a Winsor & Newton set but I've kind of mixed and matched with a, a lot of Daniel Smith colours as my uh, Winsor & Newton colours have uh, receded in their trays. Uh, Daniel Smith are a little bit cheaper where I live, so and I actually don't really don't mind painting with them. My watercolours uh, that I'm using in this instance, um, the Windsor Red, uh, these are the Windsor Newtons, the Windsor Red, French Ultramarine, Permanent Sap Green, I love that. Uh, it's the one colour that I'm still sticking with in terms of the, uh, with the Windsor Newton. Yellow Ochre, Raw Sienna and Burnt Sienna, um, combination of those browns. Uh, yellow browns is uh, something that uh, I think yeah, I, I all, my, always sort of mixing matching those. It's just they're amazing. Uh, in terms of Daniel Smith, um, looking at the hands of yellow medium, 
as well as the ultramarine violet at different times. I really want to experiment with the with the purple. Uh, a lot of the grubs we have down here have a, have a have some real beautiful purple highlighting, and I probably didn't make it as prominent in the images as what I would have liked. Uh, I did probably put it through in terms on the claws a little bit, but yeah, I probably could have done a little bit more there. I wasn't quite sure what to do with the greenery down the bottom. So again, Frank, uh, it was the again it was the permanent sap green there that uh, that I utilised during that. If I remember correctly, I think I may have used Daniel Smith Parisian green to provide some dark elements to that as well. My abstract uh, image, my drawing, uh, again using uh, state level pigment fine lines. Uh, I, I use a range of different types of, uh, of pens. When one runs out, I just sort of experiment and find uh, a few others. It's a, uh, a 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and a 0.8 uh, that I would generally use with my drawings. Again, when I first started uh, painting this image or drawing this image, I had no idea it was actually going to be a crustacean. And the it looks very disjointed, <laughs> uh, very disjointed. I think if an animal were to be born or any kind of crustacean born with uh, that looks like this, uh, uh, yeah, well, mobility was an issue. Absolutely, I don't think its flipper would work very well, but. Uh, that's not what abstracts about, is it? It's uh, we're not looking at anything that is real life. Uh, we're looking at something that is make believe, and I just love that way of drawing. I utilised a range of techniques in this image uh, or in this painting. I like to glaze and then utilise water to spread uh, the pigment and provide some depth of intensity of colour uh, to sort of insinuate shadows. Uh, the other thing that you would normally do uh, in a watercolour painting would be to begin with a bit of a wash in the background and then slowly start bringing your detail through. In this instance um, I've started with the detail and very very carefully using a wet on wet um, bringing in uh, at the background very very carefully. Oh, was a little bit sloppy in a couple of areas, um, but just to give a little bit of a separation uh, and to insinuate an ocean background. I definitely rushed a few elements of this image, which I'm a little bit annoyed with. Uh, first, it's definitely the, I suppose, the little pincers that come out uh, on the long, squiggly little arms, as well as the eyes. I've rushed those quite considerably, and I think with some time and a bit more care uh, and being a little bit more precise with my line, I could have definitely got those to be a little bit better. But again, I was uh, happy with the product in general. Not sure just how I feel about the cartooniness of it. Very cartoony. So that's going to be something I will be yeah, having a think about and changing. Not changing, but you know. It's a bit of a growth mindset view on things. It's always good to look at things and how I can improve, what things can I do differently next time. Uh, and that's something that I go by through my professional life as well as my hobbies, uh, which this is. Well, thank you for watching my first watercolour that I have recorded. At some stage I'd love to record one of my drawings and upload that. I think that would be a lot of fun uh, just to see where that goes and um, maybe one of my landscapes uh, that I'd like to do through my watercolour at some point and also flip through some of the artwork that I've completed so far. Well without any further ado I am going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you.